property law transfer of property act in brief and important uh, topics from examination point of view <coughs> dear friends you are aware that i am dr rega surya rao principal retired aided law college maharashtra in the last class i completed property law in general in that lecture i discussed about different kinds of properties and uh, transfer of different kinds of properties and uh, respect to legislations that governing the transfer of properties as a matter of fact property law na doesn't uh, property law doesn't refer to a single legislation or enactment particular kind of transfer property laws contains various kinds of transfers in respect of tangible property and intangible property movable property immovable property transfer of transfer by act of parties or voluntary transfers transfer of transfer by compulsion or operation of law all these aspects namely intellectual property law the what are the laws governing intellectual pro, uh, what are the legislations of intellectual property governing intangible properties what is the, what are the legislations governing movable property immovable property laws governing intestate succession testamentary succession all these topics i i explained in detail in my first lecture property law in general this property law refers to various legislations governing different transfers <coughs> one legislation among them is transfer of property act this subject property law the subject title is property law today and in some universities it is entitled as transfer of property act previously the title of the subject was not property law it was transfer of property act in the recently this title of the subject transfer of property act has been renamed as property law when we want to speak discuss about property law we have to discuss about various kinds of transfers and various uh, legislations um, transfer of movable property immovable property tangible property intangible property uh, succession sale of goods act negotiable instrument act and uh, transfer by operation of law operation of law means uh, insolvency insolvency code is there 2016 and uh, presidential insolvency act provincial insolvency act and uh, the uh, execution of decree by civil civil procedure codes provisions are there and criminal procedure code provisions are there for seizure and for seizure of uh, accused person so many aspects are there but the property law is a general concept transfer of property act is a particular concept so this in the last class i explained in general various kinds of transfers and various legislations that regulate the transfers today i want to explain in particular the transfer of property act the trans i in this class i let you know various topics of transfer of property act in brief and uh, the most important topics from examination point of view also i will let you know dear friends when you want to start preparation on any particular subject at the very outset you have to choose the suitable book for your standard it may be the smallest book or the largest book but you have to go through the you take the guidance of senior to your teachers can senior students and your capacity you go through the contents of different books and choose the suitable books which uh, which reaches your standard and then start preparation when you take up any subject for suppose you want to take up preparation for 
transfer of property act that is property law you have to choose the book of your choice and basically you must have idea overall idea about the entire subject we have overall idea about the one thing subject for this purpose you have to give novel grading of the book from first chapter to last chapter so that you can have an idea about the subject and you have to pick up pick out some most important topics not only most important topics but also very easy topics from exam very easy topic which you will be able to remember well you have to pick out such topic and preparation in the first instance you have to pick out five most important topics after that you have to pick out some three more important topic and three more and so on you can subject to your capacity you have to do like this so on these lines i want to give guidance uh, in this lecture first of all if you want to read the whole book you require lot of time that is why if you just uh, watch my lecture summary lecture which is most important lecture among all the lectures uh, relating to that particular subject dear friends don't fail to watch and listen very carefully my summary lecture you listen to the summary lecture and you pick out the most important topic five topics in first instant and uh, next three topics two topics and so on in the, if you pick out the most important and easy topics for you and uh, prepare them very well out of them you are expected to get two to three three questions if you will be able to write very well excellently these two to three topics with good hand writing you will be your you you will you are sure of success this is my opinion this is my uh, this is my suggestion for virtue of my practical experience for more than 30 years dear friend so i request you to watch my summary lecture without fail so suppose you want to have knowledge about the subject if you want law degree with some enough knowledge you have you should have subject what uh, you should have overall idea about the subject before going to give you uh, the uh, important topics and uh, summary of tp act in brief let me pray god pay homage to my beloved parents rega parav and shrimati kanta ratnam let me express my deep sense of gratitude to my uh, godfathers and well wishers and uh, in particular uh, management breeders ne jyan prabodhini law college aided law college fulton satara district maharashtra and uh, above all in particular to my student friends and viewers who are personally instrumental for what i am now i must be highly indebted to all of you dear friends don't neglect our law great law subject so don't think that getting degree law degree is different acquiring knowledge in law is very diff very entirely different if you possess sound knowledge you can have bright future which no other uh, no other course will have you know the supreme court advocates uh, get fee in crores which no professional will be able to get that much the judges the members of judiciary high court and Ju supreme court they are more powerful than government they so sometimes as they can set aside the government orders they can set aside the law passed by the parliament such a greatest prestigious supreme position the law has been conferred with when once you have opted to prosecute studies it is your primary duty and responsibility to take minimum care and responsibility to know the subject if you go to court without any basic knowledge you will be uh, ill treated and insulted from time to time in bar room and uh, and uh, when you by and also will your senior will accuse you from time to time so after law degree 
completion of your course before going to enter the court as an advocate i sincerely suggest you to watch all my just think if the views are good if the views are good i can have more and more inspiration to deliver more and more lectures if the views of the my students do not utilize my lectures properly naturally i will get disappointment so i i have witnessed practically out of a subject some lectures in a subject some views are in thousand other views are in other lectures views are in hundreds so i am giving equal effort all topics are very uh, i am giving equal importance and i am giving equal attention for all the lectures dear friend now let us now go to the subject dear friend my classes will be one hour and more because i have short i have taken up the uh, joint venture joint academic venture means i have undertaken to uh, deliver lectures on 30 subjects each sub 30 subjects and uh, all the 30 subjects i will deliver 100% i pray god to get me enough strength and also pray god to in inspire uh, the minds of my students to make use of my lectures you please offer your comment i am sincerely honestly say that i will deliver lectures but i want to deliver lectures uh, cover almost all the subjects first and now uh, in property law in last class i complete i, I discussed in detail about uh, property law as a whole various legislations and various transfers in this class transfer of property act as a whole i will give brief summary and uh, what is what i will tell you i will tell you the most important topics in transfer of property act uh, the the transfer of property act was passed in the year 1882 it came into force on <coughs> 1st july 1882 it is a territorial law it applies to the whole of india including the jas including the state of jammu and kashmir earlier actually except the state of jammu and kashmir was there because as a con in persians of the abolition of article 370 of the indian constitution that conferred independent status to jam jammu and kashmir now it is also like any the jammu and kashmir was split into two parts one union territory with assembly and other union territory without assembly now we have 28 states and nine union territories so this law uh, this is the central legislation passed by parliament it applies to the whole of india including the state of jammu and kashmir this transfer of property act contains 137 sections divided into eight chapters this transfer of property act contains 137 sections divided into eight chapters chapter 1 chapter 1 containing chapter 1 containing section 1 to 4 deals with preliminary concept extent to enforceability interpretation clause in section 3 in which we discuss about immovable property actionable crimes notice notice attestation etc and section 5 to 53a chapter 2 containing chapter section 5 to 53a lay down various provisions relating to general principles so chapter 1 containing section 1 to 4 deals with preliminary concepts in which includes interpretation class under section 3 in which we study uh, in definitions of the most important definition immovable property attestation actionable claim and notice that it includes uh, uh, express notice and constructive notice section 5 chapter 2 contains section 5 to 53a these this second chapter uh, contains various principles chapter 3 chapter 3 to uh, th- chapter 3 to 7 deal with specific transfers specific transfers namely sale mortgage sale mortgage 
लीज एक्सचेंज गिफ्ट एंड सोन लास्ट चैप्टर एट डील्स विद थर्टी टू थर्टी टू डील विद असाइनमेंट ऑफ एक्शनबल क्लाइम्स एंड अदर एस्पेक्ट्स सेक्शन थर्टी थ्री टू थर्टी सेवन डील विद अदर मिसलेनियस एक्सपेक्ट्स सो दिस इज अबाउट ट्रांसफर ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी एक्ट इन ब्रीफ नाउ दिस ट्रांस लाइक सो मेनी लेजिस्लेशन लाइक इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट इंडियन पेनल कोड पेनल कोड दिस ट्रांसफर ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी एक्ट ब्रॉडली डिवाइडेड इंटू टू पार्ट्स पार्ट वन पार्ट वन कंटेनिंग टू चैप्टर्स दट इज सेक्शन वन टू फिफ्टी थ्री ए डील कंटेन्स जनरल प्रिंसिपल्स चैप्टर वन एंड टू कंटेनिंग सेक्शन वन टू फिफ्टी थ्री ए प्रोवैड फर् जनरल प्रिंसिपल जनरल प्रिंसिपल मीन दीज आर दि प्रिंसिपल इन जनरल विच आर स्ट्रिक्टली एडर टू विच आर स्ट्रिक्टली फॉलोड इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ एनी ट्रांसफर एनी ट्रांसफर वेदर इट इज वेदर इट इज रिफर रेफरेंस टू मूवल प्रॉपर्टी आर इमोबल प्रॉपर्टी सेक्शन वन टू फिफ्टी थ्री ए डील वि कंटेन जनरल प्रिंसिपल सेक्शन फिफ्टी फोर टू of section 54 to 129 deal with various uh, specific transfers section 130 to 132 deal with assignment of actionable claims and remaining uh, miscellaneous concepts general concepts so this is so that is why the transfer of property act is basically broadly divided into two parts part 1 general principles part to specific transfers dear friends in transfer of property act the topics under general principles that is uh, section 1 to 53a are technical or little bit difficult to remember whereas the uh, topics under part 2 uh, that is from chapter 3 to 8 these topics are easy to understand easy to understand as i told you in part 2 some important some, uh, there are prince some important principles are there in part 2 uh, section 3 movable property definitions are there movable property uh, attestation actionable claim notice and uh, section 6 what property can be transferred what property cannot be transferred what property cannot be transferred section 13 benefit for uh, benefit uh, transfer of benefit in respect of unborn person section 14 uh, uh, principle of perpetuity transfer transfer of in uh, transfer in perpetuity and uh, transfer for uh, so many generation then vested interest contingent trust section 1 to uh, 20 uh, 24 and um, uh, doctrine of part performance is there uh, sale by ostensible owner is there doctrine of lease pendants doctrine of elections all these topics are there these are important from examination point of view from part 2 uh, chapter 3 uh, deals with uh, Uh, sale this chapter i need not uh, explain because sale chapter i had already discussed in uh, sale of goods act in contracts uh, uh, sale of goods act in contracts 2 uh, contracts 2 you refer my lecture contracts 2 sale of goods for sale sale agreement to sell right rights of vendor rights and duties of vendor all these things you can uh, have full idea if you refer my lecture then next lecture is uh, mortgage mortgage is very big chapter mortgage is very big chapter but it is very very important chapter from examination point of view and the uh, next chapter is lease very easy chapter lease uh, lease conditions for lease and uh, termination of lease just like termination of agency like that this is very easy chapter um next chapter is exchange exchange means one property is uh, given and another property is taken that is exchange last property last chapter eighth chapter is uh, actionable claims dear friends in uh, transfer of property act what are the main chapters <coughs> what chapters are uh, what are the main topics what topics are most important from examination point of view what are the topics 
not only important from examination point of view but also easy for you for to remember i will yes so this transfer i repeat once again this transfer of property act mainly divided into two parts this this transfer of property act mainly divided into two parts part 1 chapter 1 and 2 containing section 1 to 53a deal with general principles the general principles are common for all transfers movable tra property immovable property and everything and secondly uh, part 2 that is uh, specific transfers that is from third chapter to third chapter to eighth chapter chapter 3 sale chapter 4 chapter 4 mortgage chapter 5 uh, chapter 5 lease chapter 6 exchange chapter 7 uh, gift chapter 8 uh, uh, actionable claims these are the topic in uh, general principles uh, i told you there are some topics to be prepared for the examination they are uh, section 3 four topics immovable property attestation actionable claim notice then this is this topic you have to read uh, from examination point of view second topic immovable prop uh, second topic what property can be transferred what property cannot be transferred under section 6 uh, uh, clause 1 clause a to uh, a to h including dd of transfer of property act deal with nine topics these these nine nine kinds of properties these nine kinds of properties cannot be transferred and i will give a lecture separate lecture what property can be transferred what property cannot be transferred i will discuss in a separate lecture immovable property notation actionable claim and notice yeah, that is one lecture and all the topics i will i will take up 100% but i will go one by one by one let my student friends make use of the lectures delivered then in which area the lectures are maximum utilized in immediately i will go for the next lecture next lecture but i have to cover all the 30 subjects i have to look take care of all the student the most important subjects i have to take up and uh, most important topics i have to take up first from examination point of view the most important topics must be common to not only llb level <coughs> llm level and also <coughs> judicial officers level now here after section 6 next uh, 13 unborn person 14 uh, 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 transfer in perpetuity uh, vested interest contingent interest 30 19 to 24 uh, sale by ostensible owner um, doctrine of election doctrine of lease pendants doctrine of part fair farming if you prepare these topics enough but out of these you pay, out of these what i sincerely suggest you is you give overall overall really overall reading of all the topics are uh, you listen to my lecture um, thoroughly uh, summary lecture and first pick out some specific uh, specific transfer specific transfers you take first gift then you take uh, lease then you take uh, mortgage first you take up gift lease mortgage these three topic plus a uh, immovable property meaning and definition then transfer of uh, what property can be transferred what property cannot be transferred section 6 and then doctrine of lease pendants doctrine of election and doctrine of part performance in the first stage i sincerely suggest my student friends to pick out uh, gift lease mortgage these three topics from specific gift lease mortgage sale you can also have idea because you studied in the sale of goods act it is very easy you you refer uh, sale of goods act it is enough lease uh, gift lease mortgage these three topics you have to take up and uh, from principles uh, immovable property under section 3 uh, second at uh, i notice attestation actionable claim may be asked for short notice you take that then section 6 you take up so there then you take up doctrine of election then you take up doctrine of lease pendants um, doctrine of lease pendant and part fair permit article so see here 
I want to tell you, please keep in mind, some of the topics in Transfer of Property Act are identical to Sale of Goods Act. So, the Sale of Goods Act deals with transfer of movable property between two living persons. The Transfer of Property Act 1882 deals with transfer of immovable property and also movable property between two living persons. Here, what are the various legislations that deal with what are the various legislations that deal with various transfers? I explained in detail in lecture one. Now, dear friend, for transfer of property act, you just choose uh, five uh, these uh, uh, gift, lease, mortgage. Uh, wow, section 3 removable property section 6 uh, what property can be transferred what property cannot be transferred then doctrine of lease pendant doctrine of election doctrine of part fair for men you take these topics in the first instant you prepare them very very thoroughly uh, thoroughly and so that you will be able to answer three to four questions hundred percent and thereafter you uh, prepare for the remaining topics so i will take up all the topics but one thing in this class i will let you know uh, in brief what is what what are these topics what they deal with dear friend the transfer of property the transfer of property in a civilized society transfer of property is quite obvious so transfer of property from one limpi the transfer of property act 1882 deals with transfer of property between two living person one living person to another living person one or two more living person to and one or more living person this side one part the transferor is one person transferee is one person the transferor may be one person or more than one person the transferee may be more than one person or more than one person so the transfer of property act deals with transfer between transfer of immovable property and also movable property between two living persons the transfer of property act mainly deals with mainly deals with transfer of immovable property they are chapter 3 <coughs> chapter 3 uh, sale chapter 4 mortgage chapter 5 lease these three chapters exclusively relate to transfer of immobile property transfer sale mortgage and lease these transfers uh, exclusively uh, they speak about transfer of immobile property between two living persons others are uh, the principles and other chapters uh, deal with transfer of not only immobile property but also movable property also movable property also here the transfer of immobile property uh, mainly de uh, mainly deals with immobile property it also deals with movable property chapter 1 to 4 preliminary aspects um, so chapter 2 uh, all except chapter 3 to 5 except chapter 3 to 5 that is from section 54 to 117 deal with transfer of immovable properties only uh, all the remaining deal with both from, from, uh, both movable and uh, immovable properties now here in uh, let us now first discuss about uh, principles first topic for discussion is under chapter 1 section 1 to 4 the most important aspect under this is section 3 section 3 provides for uh, section 3 uh, refers to interpretation clause it defines uh, four uh, four concepts one is immovable property second one is attestation third one is actionable claim and fourth one is uh, notice fourth one is uh, notice section 3 immovable property section 3 immovable property what is uh, what is immovable property section 3 para 2 of transfer of property act defines immovable property details i will tell you i will immovable property out of common sense we can know what is movable property 
what is removable property uh, radio so fridge so cards so furniture they are movable and land buildings so trees so they are immobile out of common sense we can say that what property can be moved from one place to another without any loss or decline in its value is movable property what property cannot be moved or transferred from one place to another place <coughs> is immobile property we cannot remove house from one place and uh, transfer it to another place so if we remove tree at one place and uh, put it in another place it will be of new no use section uh, uh, 3 um, section 3 <coughs> section 3 para 2 of uh, transfer of property act 1882 uh, says that all are immobile properties except standing timber growing uh, growing crop and grass all are immobile properties all all things mean which are embedded to earth which are attached to earth which are constructed on earth or immobile properties except standing timber growing crop and uh, and uh, grass so certain trees are uh, certain trees are planted for particular purpose when the trees are grown grown up they are cut into pieces and uh, used as a timber or furniture or something similarly growing crop whether it may be rice or wheat or uh, a commercial crop uh, it, it is attached to earth for some time after the time is over it will be cut and uh, uh, transported and similarly grass grass is cut and uh, uh and cash so that is why the the transfer of property act section 3 para 2 gave some negative definition negative definition all are immobile properties except standing timber growing crop and uh, grass that is the, this is definition uh, this is negative definition this definition was uh, found to be not comprehensive not satisfactory then general clauses act uh, 1897 section 3 Okay, class 26 section 3 class 26 of general clauses act uh, gave definition sorry improved definition according to that uh, th things uh, uh, things that are attached to earth, things to arise out of land one sentence is added things to arise out of land also come within the meaning of immobile property according to the general clauses de de definition so standing timber growing crop and uh, grass uh, they are cut now itself and uh, sold or tra transferred this is mobile property suppose suppose in a mango garden uh, <coughs> in a mango garden the mangoes are uh, purchased the the mango garden is purchased for the output for this year the fruits are cut and taken away it is a mobile property but if it is for future year also this year next year or three years this year and next year it comes under things to arise out of land next year it will come things arise, arise out of land it comes under the purview of uh, immobile property it may be for one year three years five years ten years whatever it may be not only the output of today and uh, next output likely to be grown he also will similarly grass today in ground grass is cut <coughs> <coughs> some 10,000 rupees is paid uh, and cut the grass was cut and taken it is movable property some 1 lakh rupee is paid for uh, its grass uh, for cutting it time to time today this month next month uh, future month like this that is immobile property that is the significance of uh, this general clauses act you develop it next important it is also not comprehensive then next one more definition is Indian uh, Registration Act 1908 uh, uh, section 2 class 6 this is third definition these uh, according to this definition this is a wide definition it covers all the things uh, land so building so things attached to earth uh, and uh, things attached to the attachments of the earth uh, for example things attached to building building is attached to earth uh, building is embedded in earth and uh, for a building uh, windows uh, windows uh, and uh, other uh, <coughs> woodwork uh, woodworks etc they are uh, this so ceiling fan if ceiling fan in a building is permanently affixed it is removable property if a ceiling fax is removed from time to time it is a uh, movable property like that uh, um, he, he all the covering in uh, indian registration act he covers uh, so many this definition covers so many topics 
including it exempted three growing crop standing timber growing crop grass stand that is this mean this is for one first particular issue only so all are all things attached embedded in earth and uh, things that are attached to earth are permanent attached to those attachments embedded uh, those who are embedded in uh, earth on permanent basis are things except standing timber growing crop and grass that is for one issue only this is the definition of uh, definition is over i need not explain this definition once again you have to follow this this immobile property definition is very important from examination point of view next attestation what do you mean by attestation this word attestation this term attestation is quite most obviously used in our common life attestation means uh, uh, to sign and uh, attestation means uh, to sign and witness the execution of a document by the executed what is attestation suppose i i have i, I opened a bank account i have uh, opened some uh, fixed deposit i put the name of the nominee while putting the name of the nominee some witness should be there suppose i gave loan to 1 lakh i to i took 1 lakh loan uh, from the creditor and uh, promissory note i execute a promissory note and as a, whether, whether i have executed or not for the proof one or two witnesses will be there so with witness suppose life certificate is given somebody should assert so i declare that i am alive so it is to be attested attested by some digit officer or like this so that is what is called attestation to sign and uh, attestation means to sign and section 3 of tp act uh, speaks about uh, attestation to sign and witness the execution of a document by the executed all all uh, affidavits and everything they are uh, signed by the witnesses similarly all sale agreements uh, uh, land uh, land sale uh, sale deeds of land and all other uh, important documents bills etc they are mm, uh, witness uh, give uh, attested that is uh, signed by the witnesses that process is called uh, process called attestation third topic is actionable claim actionable claim is that claim acts by for we, uh, which carries some benefit so actionable claim is claim in respect of which the claim claimant who is entitled to get some benefit can uh, claim the same by filing a case by fi by filing an action in a civil court action group claim is a claim or an instrument uh, which entitles the claimant some uh, benefit financial benefit to in order to get the benefit he can file a case in civil court and uh, Uh, get it so bill uh, uh, bill of exchange promissory note uh, any uh, promissory note check etc each check is bounced he can file a case and get money uh, get money through the court suppose uh, uh, suppose uh, promissory note uh, the uh, debtor fails to repay the uh, 1 lakh amount uh, but uh, then the creditor can uh, on the basis of uh, this uh, Uh, actionable claim uh, it can be uh, it can be um, on that he can uh, claim it so the unsecured creditor and in any immovable property in respect of immovable property which is uh, which is not in possession of the claimant he can file a case suppose uh, uh, he purchases some uh, he books some uh, uh, some movable property and uh, uh, a agree to sell some movable property on a future date and uh, b agree to purchase it but thereafter a will not sell then b can file a case against for uh, specific performance so these are the actionable claims section 130 to 132 of the transfer of property act uh, deal with assignment of uh, actionable claims actionable claims mean checks bills of exchange promissory notes and uh, any uh, lic policies uh, share warrants uh, and uh, share uh, shares share warrants lic policies medical claims all these things instrument under which a person is entitled to get money he is having financial interest if he could not get it he can file a case in civil court and get it get it so this is what is called actionable claim so uh, notice what do you mean by notice notice means uh, existence of some facts i don't have notice about it i don't have 
any notice. I did not know. Suppose uh, some function is going to be held on so and so date. I could not attend it because I did not have notice it. Suppose I could have, uh, no, I could have, I, I could have a notice of that particular problem. I could have attended. I do. So the TP Act Section Three enunciates that what are the circumstances under which a person is expected to have notice. So the notice is of two two categories. One is uh, uh, express notice, and other is. Uh, constructive notice one is express notice other is constructive notice suppose august 15 there will be flag hosting this is a it is everybody a, every teacher and student is expected to know that august 15 uh, they, there will the principal will give notice by written or oral and uh, ask all the staff and the students to come for flag hosting this thing <coughs> every year flag hosting takes place on 25 15th august and 26 january it is a constructive notice everybody is expected to know even if the teacher or principal will not give notice no some are of some particular birthday the and a particular birthday the birthday celebrations of founder of a college takes place every year on a particular day it is a constructive notice to all so if it is explained if it is informed by orally or writing by the head of the institution it is express notice if without a notice all are expected to know on the ground uh, uh, that is constructive notice the doctrine of constructive notice is what uh, constructive notice uh, i explained in detail ashbury railway versus company versus richie in that case i explained in detail in company law uh, the details so with this section 3 is over and uh, uh, this most important topic is over next important topic for discussion is section 6 of the transfer of property act section 6 section 5 property uh, uh, section 6 of the transfer of property act and uh, according to section 5 what property can be transferred what property the properties tangible property intangible property movable property immovable property any property can be transferred provided the transfer is uh, between uh, two living persons under section 5 of the transfer of property act all properties can be transferred movable or immobile between two persons except uh, uh, the items nine items embodied or enshrined in section 6 clause a to uh, h of the transfer of property act there are nine items there is these nine items uh, should not be transferred those nine items so i will take a, a number one is space succession so suppose i am grand i am son my father uh, uh, suppose a, a is father b is the son after death of a property goes to b but the property will come to b after death of a because that property is self acquired property the father may give to property to his son or some other we cannot say but when father dies the property goes to uh, son so the property heritable that uh, without receiving the property he cannot uh, transfer suppose some court is uh, court case is going on the plaintiff is confident that the, he will get degree and he will get the property and a part of the property or in full property cannot be transferred so what property the future property the property can be transferred which is in existence the future property cannot be he transferred except in a few sections like that personally restricted interest i have tentative i am telling detail each and every point uh, personally restricted interest certain job certain jobs can be done only by a particular person some tirupati lord balaji temple <coughs> tirumala tirupati devasthanam no? the doors early morning door should be opened by a particular person only <clears throat> nobody nobody will be qualified to open the doors similarly some abhishekas or something should be done by uh, that particular pandit only after his death some uh, natural here must uh, do it but anybody cannot uh, do it in a church similarly in church similarly in darga similarly in masjid mosque uh, some uh, specified persons only uh, by virtue of uh, uh, generation only they will be able to do so i in this connection i tell you kanchi kama uh, kanchi kama pit you know, that uh, uh, chief jiyendra saraswati when he died he is a son or grandson alone we should occupy the chair as a natural here nobody should come so mean uh, uh, in uk uh, crown is there 
the crown is hereditary monarch either king or queen so the family the if the king dies his son or daughter as a queen or uh, uh, the prince or uh, if a queen dies a queen is uh, crown for instance if the king or queen is crown if uh, the king or queen dies his son or daughter should occupy the throne no other so this is uh, there are some personally restricted interests are there some once it qualifications cannot be transferred once degrees cannot be transferred once uh, uh, awards padma shri padma bhushan bharat ratna such things cannot be transferred uh, uh, some public offices that is government offices cannot be transferred uh, so, so many some uh, pensions cannot be transferred once uh, maintenance right to sue there are so many item, some items are there i will t- explain these items in detail because section 6 is uh, section 3 need not be explained again so next topic is competent to contract who who is competent to transfer the immobile property so it is the transfer of property act deals with uh, transfer of uh, uh, mobile and immobile property between two living person it mainly deals with the transfer of immobile property it also deals with transfer of uh, mobile property competent the person who is competent within the meaning of section 11 and 12 of indian contract act he can competent he must be a major he must not be of sound mind he must not have been declared by declared by law in force to contract then uh, secondly he must have bona fide title he must have bona fide title he is must be the real owner he must be a real owner he must be a bona fide title he must have absolute right he has a absolute right means uh, the owner of the property is uh, will have absolute right he can use or enjoy he can uh, he can let or uh, he can he can let or hire he can let or hire he can uh, sell he can uh, even destroy so you can let or hide so it is immovable property property it is like it is the, the word let is used it is movable property hire is used some car or scooter or motorcycle is cycle is given on is given it is hire similarly mortgage movable property is given as security for loan it is mortgage if movable property is given as security it is pledge if go some gold is put in give loan is obtained against gold in bank it is pledge suppose uh, a, how a loan is obtained from bank against a building it is mortgage it is mortgage so this is the thing so um, these are the competent a person who has a title of the property whether it is movable property or immovable property and uh, who is competent to contract within the meaning of section 11 and 12 of indian contract act is competent to contract <laughs> contract to contract this is section 7 section 13 and 14 section 13 and 14 mean and suppose uh, if a, when a, a property when a property for uh, uh, section 13 speaks about transfer of property for the benefit of unborn person unborn persons <laughs> so here uh, section 5 tells that uh, the, when a property is to be transferred both transfer and transfer transfer must be in existence must be existed when a property to transfer any property the person who transfer the property must be a competent person he must be major and other thing if the property can be transferred to even minor even a minor then even a minor but but uh it cannot be transferred to unborn person uh, na- normally speaking according to section 5 when a pers- if property movable or immovable property is transferred uh, the transfer must be in existence he must not be in mother's womb similarly uh, section uh, uh nine of our trust act say the indian trust act say that the person the transfer must be capable of holding the property if the transfer to hold the must to be capable of holding the property he must be in existence so accordingly accordingly uh, an unborn person or a child in mother's womb is not entitled to get property transfer so that is general things according to section 5 tp act according to section 9 uh, this uh, uh, indian trust act no but uh, uh, trust act uh cannot be transferred but uh, section 30 is an exception section 13 is an exception uh, to this rule and uh, 
transfer of property can be affected in favor of a child in, who is uh, who is unborn so that is section 13 14 means section 14 speaks about uh, transfer of uh, uh, in perpetuity so uh, uh, indefinite transfers indefinite the transfer of uh, in perpetuity a rule of uh, rule against section 14 rule against perpetuity or imperpetuity means a, any person who is having property who has a title over the property who is competent to transfer under section 11 and 12 of indian contract act can transfer the property for some time only for one generation only he can transfer the property to his son and thereafter to somebody but he cannot wave no one can transfer the property to generations to generations he can transfer pro his property to b that's all in his life for after that to whom he is going to transfer it is left to him it is left to him so in vested interest and constant interest or some this he can, he can transfer his property for his lifetime after his death to c that is there and uh, that is vested interest vested interest contingents i will tell you so, no. so the law prevents the transfer of property for generations to generations so that uh, uh, if uh, uh, the this is what is called the rule against perpetuity section 14 next one is vested interest and contingent interest under section 19 to 24 21 and tw 22 and 23 are common provisions 22 and 23 deal with vested interest and common interest what is vested interest and what is common interest <laughs> when a transfer or transfers property transfer he will have some interest what is right interest recognized what is legal right interest recognized and protected is legal right suppose when i when you uh, park your vehicle you lock the vehicle because you have interest in that property you have insurable interest in that property you lock the vehicle because your lock should be safe that uh, interest uh, said nobody should steal your two wheeler or four wheeler that is interest that interest is uh, that interest uh, that means you you have interest in that vehicle so that interest is called insurable interest that means you have a right over that vehicle that interest recognized is right interest recognized is right suppose when you wake top your vehicle and again you take back your vehicle nobody will question interest recognized because that is his vehicle he brought that vehicle locked it and good interest recognized is right interest recognized and protected by court of law or law a court of justice or law it is legal right in jurisprudence we will discuss all these things so mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, this uh, when uh, he transfer or transfer some property transfer transfer will have interest such interest is of two kinds one is vested interest and uh, uh, but immediately if it is transferred automatically the interest goes it is okay this interest uh, can be studied under two heads vested interest and contingent interest in vested interest means <laughs> a transfer his property to b for lifetime and uh, thereafter to c a transfer his property to b who is 70 year old after his death uh, to c some other friend some other friend see he is some 30 years old so the general rule is uh, older will die first uh, younger will die later so a transferred the property one building to b who is 70 year old after his death go when he is ever 78 year old shortly he is likely to die he, he will die he is certain but when he will die it is uncertain one certain certain plus uncertain is contingent interest the 70 year old man will die at 72 year or 75 year 80 year he will die and the 30 year old man will go, will uh, will survive for 50 60 70 years is this thing so here uh, b will die is certain when he will die he is uncertain so then c's interest is uh, uh, vested interest now contingent interest for example 
A transfers his property to B for lifetime and uh, and thereafter to C provided B is not survived by children. <coughs> A transferred some property to B and B dies, uh, the property will go to C if C does not have any child, boy or girl. If C is having, B is having boy or girl, D, C will not get. Then C's interest is uh, contingent interest, double uncertain. So when uh, B will die is uncertain and whether, uh, uh, whether, whether the death is without any child is uncertain. So that is this thing. Still there may be any certainty. If he dies and he dies without any children, that uh, C's interest will be contingent interest. So this is what is called, this is topic for, uh, 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 topic for, uh, Topic for short notes. So this is vested interest coordinates. Doctrine of election. Section 35. Doctrine of election means it is a one. You can choose the best of two words. Suppose there is a property. There is a, there is a property. So A, A's property is vested in some trustee. Suppose my property is trusted in. Is vested in. I have vested some property in some trustee. A. Then uh, the person who is in possession of the property is not the real owner. But he has a bona fide possession of that property. That property contains uh, benefit and burden. burden. If the property is uh, transferred to some legal here or somebody as directed by the transferor, the transferee should accept the property containing both uh, burden and benefit. But uh, the transferee should not say I will accept only profit, profit, I don't accept only burden. That is, for example, I have shares, company A shares and company B shares. Company A shares is getting, uh, or attract, getting handsome dividend. Company B shares are, uh, so many calls in areas are there. So this company B shares, uh, company B is about to uh, be closed, liquidated. And when the company is liquidated, what are the areas to be paid on the shares must be payable. I have given company A shares and company B shares to my a trustee and uh, you give it to them to my natural here or somebody. When the trustee wants to give the shares to the transferee, the transferee when he wants to receive the shares, he must accept both company share, uh, shares of company A carrying benefit, shares of company B carrying burden both then uh, C cannot say the transferee cannot say I will take the shares of company which is getting uh, which uh, which which I from which I will get dividend but I don't accept the share for which I will have to pay calls in areas this is the thing suppose similarly property is given that property is worth of uh, some uh, 10 lakhs but uh, some uh, installments of uh, 4 lakhs is to be paid some house taxes of 2 lakhs is to be paid <coughs> <coughs> when transferee, when the trustee uh, transfers the property to the transferee, the transferee should accept the property worth of 10 lakhs and uh, it should all, he should also accept uh, liability to repay remaining installment of 4 lakhs and also 1 lakh uh, uh, municipal area to municipal taxes and other areas. This is what is called uh, doctrine of election. This topic you have to, we will discuss in detail. Next topic for discussion is uh, section 52, uh, doctrine of list pendant. The doctrine of list pendency is based on the maximum pendant light litigation during pending litigation, nothing new can be invented. In doing here, this section 52 is almost identical to section 10 of code of civil procedure here when a case when a same case between same parties is in pending before same uh, in a court the once again the case cannot be filed in same court on same subject same cause of action suppose a and b a filed a case against b claiming the title of the property in a uh, senior civil judge court 
సీనియర్ సివిల్ జడ్ కోర్ట్ ఇది కాంపిటెంట్ కోర్ట్ ప్రాపర్టీ ఇస్ హౌస్ సేమ్ వే సేమ్ సేమ్ ప్రాపర్టీ సేమ్ థింగ్ వెన్ ది కేస్ ఈజ్ పెండింగ్ ఇన్ కోర్ట్ ఏ ఎగైన్ ఇన్ అనదర్ టౌన్ హీ కెనాట్ ఫైల్ ది సేమ్ కేస్ సో ఇఫ్ అనదర్ కేస్ ఈజ్ ఫైల్డ్ దట్ సబ్సిక్వెంట్ కేస్ ఈజ్ డిస్మిస్డ్ ది సబ్సిక్వెంట్ కోర్ట్ విల్ ప్రొసీడ్ విల్ డెక్ విల్ స్టాప్ ఆల్ ప్రొ ఫర్దర్ ప్రొసీడింగ్ అండ్ డిస్మిస్ ది కేస్ సిమిలర్లీ సెక్షన్ ఫైవ్ ఎన్యూన్సియేట్స్ దట్ వెన్ యూ వాంట్ టు ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ ఏ ప్రాపర్టీ యూ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ క్లియర్ టైటిల్ యూ మస్ట్ హ్యావ్ బోనఫైడ్ టైటిల్ యూ మస్ట్ హ్యావ్ అబ్సల్యూట్ టైటిల్ వెన్ యూ హ్యావ్ అబ్సల్యూట్ టైటిల్ ఓన్లీ యూ కెన్ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ ది ప్రాపర్టీ when your property when you are enjoying some property you claim that that property is your is your your own but uh, your cousin or near or dear challenges that that property is not yours but his he files a case then when the case is pending relating to the title of this case, property you cannot sell that property if you sell that property the purchaser will have to uh hand over the property if that other man gets decree <coughs> for example i have some property i am enjoying the property one house that house is my own but my cousin claims so that it is mine i say no 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 it is not our property it is mine then he files a case against me claiming that property that case is pending the court will have to decide shortly whether i am the real owner or my cousin is real owner in the meantime what i say i sold this property to some other for cheap rate cheap pay, cheap rate suppose the property is 50 lakh i sold it for 20 lakh with a doubt that my cousin will take the property when uh, after some time the court will decree give decree to my cousin declaring that he is entitled to that property then that purchaser has to re- re- release that property to the decree holder subsequently he can file a case against me to redeem the money paid so this is what is called uh, the doctrine of lease pendants is good topic section 52 speaks about it mm-hmm. speaks about this next one is next topic for re- discussion is transfer by ostensible owner transfer by ostensible owner transfer by ostensible owner means uh, this is an exception to the uh, adox uh, transfer by ostensible owner or doctrine of uh, holding out this, this is an exception to the general man ne nemo dot quit non habit so there is a call in uh, sale of goods act uh, i explained you nemo dot quit non habit mean no one can convey a better title than what he himself has suppose i have a defective title if i sell the property of a defective title the transfer also will have defective title if i have if i sell the property of good title the purchaser also will have good title when i sell the property with defective title the the transfer also will have defective title if he try if he try sells to some other he will also will have the defective title this type of holder holder in due course uh, we studied in negotiable instrument act sale of goods act also we studied so uh, there are the person who is having title he alone can transfer the property either by sale or by lease or by uh, or by gift or whatsoever may be if he doesn't have title he cannot say so no one can convey a better title than what he himself but uh, this doctrine of uh, ostens uh, the transfer by ostensible owner or doctrine of uh, uh, holding out uh, uh, under section 41 is an exception to this though i am the owner of the property sometimes the owner alone need not sell the property he can give it to some auctioneer he can give it to some authorized agent he can give it to so if some property though the person in possession of a bona fide title the, the person is in possession the, the person is in possession of a property movable or immovable property though he doesn't have title but he has a, have a uh, bona fide he has a, he has bona fide possession he has bona fide possession this is my 
reels my scooter. I am the owner of my scooter. I gave it to the garage owner. Sir, you give it to, if we, if we get good price, you sell it to that property. And then I will give. Sir, that garage owner is a, a ostensible owner. He is in bona fide position. He can sell the property to anybody. So that is what uh, no one can convey a better title than what he himself. Uh, if a if a person uh, has bona fide title, do not have bona fide title, but he has a bona fide position by the uh, title holder, then he can transfer it. So this is what is called uh, this thing. Last one is uh, doctrine of part performance section 53A. It was inserted by the 1929 Amendment Act. Doctrine of part performance in the sense, uh, <coughs> doctrine of part performance, um, doctrine of part performance uh, refers to uh, quantum merit. It is identical to quantum merit in sale of goods act. So, when a uh, transfer of property is uh, affected, uh, there are some legal formalities should be followed. Suppose, uh, if registration is necessary, but uh, if registration is not there, the transfer is not valid. If a removable property is uh, sold, it must be registered. If it is not registered, <coughs> <coughs> the sale is not uh, complete. Suppose uh, two-wheeler or four-wheeler, it is a movable property. It is sold. It should be registered. Registration should be changed. No. If it is not, by there are certain circumstances in which when uh, the trans property is transferred and bona fide position is given and a purchaser paid money and uh, the property is completed and uh, for the reason that the property